committee that uh, uh, additional period of time to finish its business. The Honourable Louise Upsford. Uh, Mr Speaker, I rise to speak in the uh, Government Notice of Motion that has been put forward by uh, the Honourable Chris Hipkins today, which, uh, as my colleagues have said, extends the timeline, uh, extends the report back of three very important pieces of legislation. Um, finance is really at the heart of an economy. Uh, and the ability to ensure certainty and stability, whether it's in the areas of investment, uh, whether it's the area of trust law or of uh, financial services, Mr Speaker. So in terms of the Overseas Investment Amendment Bill, um, this of course uh, has been uh, around the traps for a couple of times, uh, seeking extensions and uh, many people have been contacted about this particular piece of legislation and grave concerns about um, just what direction the government is heading. And in terms of investment decisions, uh, the lack of certainty that has been um, provoked by the incumbent, uh, the incoming government is uh, quite disturbing. And that is on a number of fronts. And the, the minister that spoke before me referred to a number of matters, Mr Speaker. One was uh, related to uh, changes in the forestry settings. And the Minister will know in terms of that uh, particular piece of legislation just how complex it is. Uh, and so it would have been helpful for the Select Committee to have had the decent level of scrutiny required, a uh, longer period of time for the submitters themselves to have input. And many of those uh, that submit, um, as a previous Minister, those who get very involved are actually the legal order, fraternity. Order, order. Now, I'm now going to require the member to address the question before the House. Thank you, Mr Speaker. So in terms of an extension uh, to the report back, there is a significant number of players who are involved um, in this work, who are seeking certainty, uh, who perhaps have already made decisions not to invest in New Zealand. Uh, the government has talked about its housing priority. And so uh, the time frame of this report back of the Overseas Investment Amendment Bill being reported back to the House by the Finance and Expenditure Committee. Um, the, the motion is to extend that to the 21st of June uh, 2018. Uh, will, of course, uh, create a number of issues. Um, the Select Committee clearly needs, uh, well, has needed in the past time to consider the issues fully. Um, there hasn't been any reassurance uh, in this debate on this motion, on this notice of motion to extend the report back of the Overseas Investment Amendment Bill uh, around what that will actually entail. The Minister spoke before me, he raised the issues of forestry, raised the issue of housing, raised the issue of um, what was the, the TPP, which has had a name change, um, but nothing really has provided certainty in terms of the report back on this uh, important piece of legislation and, of course, the others that I haven't referred to, Mr Speaker, the Financial Services Legislation Amendment Bill. Uh, the motion seeks for that extension to the House by the Economic Development Science and Innovation Committee. Gosh, these select committee names are a bit of a mouthful, uh, Mr Speaker. To be extended to the 31st of July 2018. And then, of course, the Trusts Bill to be reported to the House by the Justice Committee, uh, seeking an extension of the 5th of September. And extensions aren't uh, granted li lightly, uh, Mr Speaker, and in the 52nd Parliament, there's been a very clear indication that extensions shouldn't be sought. Um, they shouldn't be sought lightly. Um, the House, I don't believe, in this debate has heard uh, why these should be extended um, sufficiently. Uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that the members opposite, uh, with responsibility for this legislation, um, I'm looking forward to, or would have looked forward to, a longer contribution from the Minister responsible for the Overseas Investment Amendment Bill. Uh, it is a complex piece of legislation, and you know, if it requires an extension, hasn't really had the full issues of why that extension has been sought, in addition to the earlier extensions that had been sought and granted, Mr Speaker, and I would be um, hopeful that uh, members opposite would provide the House 
you know, very good reasons why extensions should be granted when other pieces of legislation have had shortened report backs and shortened ability for the public to contribute. And I think there's a responsibility, Mr Speaker, when there is a shortened report back um, and the less ability for uh, people to participate in the select committee process, that then when the select committee is seeking an extension to a report back, uh, there is some balance that is put in place. Um, Mr Speaker, I'm curious to know from the Minister responsible for the Overseas Investment Amendment Bill why it is that the submitters would have less time and the committee would have a longer period of time, uh, given something that was originally thought to be quite simple. And the Overseas Investment Amendment Bill has a number of different components in it, uh, as the Minister has referred to, both in terms of um, the purchase of land, uh, the purchase of houses. Uh, right, who's right, allowed? The, me the mem members now into the substance of the bill. Her speech is also terminated. The Honourable Dr. Megan Woods. I move that the question be now put. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. 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 If the contrary will say no. The ayes have it. The question now is uh, that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. The contrary opinion will say no. The ayes have it. I call on Government Order of the Day number two. Tariff, Pacer Plus Amendment Bill.